All right, there we go. So uh, RLN has been mentioned quite a few times throughout presentations this week. And uh, I wanted to kind of talk about how it worked, like what's under the hood in a way that's like accessible to uh, most people. Uh, so the key part is the rate limiting. So it's basically controlling like how fast you can interact with the system. So an example would be like interacting with uh, Discord, like if you're in a big Discord, there's like a slowdown mode where you can only send one message every like 15 seconds or so. It's very similar. So it is made up of a couple of things. So semaphore, which is the talk before this, which is basically just uh, proving you're part of an anonymity set without revealing who you are. Shamir's secret sharing scheme, which is the majority of this talk, uh, and some time or event delineation, which I'll get into in a minute. There's kind of three stages to how Arlen works. So there's a registration process, so like joining, uh, which is basically just a Merkle tree, and signaling, which is your actual sending of messages. Then there is the slashing or secret rec recovery. So yeah, so like I just said, the registration process is just the Merkle tree. So this is basically what Semaphore is. So it's just proving you're part of an, an anonymity set uh, and this can be done on or off chain. So the signaling part, this is kind of the, the meat of all of this, is uh, so it's a CIRCOM circuit. And the first public input is the epoch, which is like a time or it could be like a post on Reddit or something like that. Um, just some delineation in a time or an event. And then the actual message and then a secret key. And out of that comes proof that your epoch and your message are accurate and you know, verified with uh, what you put into it. It proves that you belong to that, that Merkle tree, that membership group, and it spits out a secret share. So this secret share is one of the most important parts of, of how RLN works. Um, basically, if you have a, a secret, uh, you can plot that on a graph and on the y-axis you can, you, you know, this is basically how Shamir secret sharing works. Um, the random, so you have to have a random point to construct your uh, shares. And that is derived from the epoch. And the shares are generated from the message hash. So uh, the shares Basically, the, the whole idea behind Shamir's secret sharing scheme is you have, you have a secret, you break it up into parts, and you distribute those parts publicly, and if you have enough of them, you can reconstruct the secret. So with these two shares, you can reconstruct where that line is. So I'm going to go through how that works. So if you have one share, you really don't know where that line is, right? If you have two shares, then you can see where it crosses the y-axis and you can determine what the secret is. So if someone basically uh, submits too many messages too fast, like uh, you know, within a 15 second time period or whatever your, your rate limiting is, then someone can reconstruct your, your secret, your private key, basically figure out uh, your identity commitment and withdraw uh, you know, a stake or something like that. Um, and this can be split up into multiple pieces. It doesn't just have to be a linear function. This could be a polynomial, so you can have like multiple shares that you need to be able to recover. So you can say like, you know, a person can send 15 messages per day, but that's it. So this is the actual circuit. I know this looks a little confusing, but uh, if you kind of just look and see how all this is assembled, it's really not that bad. So uh, you have the epoch, the message, and the secret key going in. And the center part here, so I have a little laser pointer, the center part is the Shamir secret sharing scheme. And the right side, this is basically just the construction of the identity commitment. So it's your like public identifier for being anonymous. And uh, 
The left side, so this is just the, this is a nullifier, so it's basically the equivalent of like a nonce. And some use cases for this uh, that we thought of is, you know, you could do like auctions where you can have only so many uh, bids per item or whatever, bids per user. Um, you can have a bulletin board system like Reddit where you can only have, you know, you can only comment once per post or, you know, once per level of post. Uh, this, we've also thought about using this for preventing denial of service attacks for something like Cloudflare, where we can do that uh, anonymously and decentralized. And then, uh, so this is also used in a couple app applications that the PSC has developed, like uh, Skitter. So like we have, a, we have ZK chat in there. So it's anonymous chat where it's rate limited. And so we have a JavaScript library for this. We're working on a Rust library in collaboration with the VAC team. And we're probably gonna write a Python version and uh, a couple other bindings for languages. Um, yeah, so if you wanna look at the documentation or the code, there's the QR code. And if you have any questions, you can join our Discord. Uh, again, I'm at Heart Engineer, and yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. We have still one minute and a half. Maybe one question. Yeah. The audience, some Q&A. Any so questions? Raise your hand here. Hello. Uh, how does this compare to, suppose if you like use the Zaxis approach, where you, have, you keep one node and you keep countering the nodes and you keep incrementing the counter and you prove that the counter is less than um, some, some number? Um, I don't know. I'll have to talk to you about that offline. I'll have to think about that for a minute. Right, that okay? Okay. Any other questions? All right. Right. Big Thank round you. Of applause. Thank you. Thank you.